Stringer, he had the Working Families Party endorsement. He had the number one endorsement. Working Families Party said Scott Stringer was number one in the rankings. They put Diane Morales number two, and then they put Maya Wiley number three. That was before the allegations. After the allegations, Maya Wiley is number one. I don't know why they skipped over Diane Morales. There's been two accusations against Scott Stringer. Who wants to talk about Scott Stringer's sex life? It would be nice if our candidates had no sex drives whatsoever. So, who really wants to talk about any of this shit? But I think we have to because it would be terrible to be smeared, right? Somebody is just trying to go after you and smear you, but it's also terrible to be assaulted. So, we got to get to the bottom of things to know where do we go from here. So, I think it's best to wade into the details of the two accusations. Okay. The first accuser is Gene Kim. Gene Kim, 20 years ago, while an intern or volunteer for Scott Stringer, politician at the time, I don't know, running for comptroller maybe, Gene Kim said that Scott Stringer was groping her thighs, her butt, in between her legs, her crotch. And then, when she said no, Scott Stringer asked Gene Kim, why won't you fuck me? Why won't you just fuck me, huh? And I believe her. Gene Kim's lawyer works for many anti-progressive groups. Gene Kim looks mean and nasty. It happened 20 years ago. I'm not for sure if she said, you know, told him to stop and then he persisted because it sounds like it happened just one time. And then when it was made clear to Scott Stringer that his advances weren't liked, he stopped. Now, Stringer, he had this statement in The Intercept first. I support the right of women to come forward and be heard. Second, the allegations are false, completely antithetical to the way I've conducted my entire life, both in private and public. I wish the circumstances had been different to allow for a more thoughtful conversation. In the days after the allegation, Scott Stringer lost the endorsements of many progressive groups, including the Working Families Party, previously a coalition of progressive activists and labor unions, that is now significantly funded by progressive foundations. The New York Times endorsed Catherine Garcia, and then a May 25th survey had her winning for the first time, and she was beating Eric Adams, Andrew Yang, who is in second and third, and Scott Stringer, who is in fourth. Scott Stringer's wife is going to stand by him very strongly. She said that if she thought for a moment if Scott Stringer was guilty, she would not stand by her man. I believe her, too. Now, the second accuser, Teresa Logan. Teresa Logan said she got triggered by Jean Kim saying what had happened to her, and then that's what prompted her to come out. So, kissing and grouping, she carried trays. For, there was forcible kipping, uh, kipping. There was forcible kissing and grouping as she carried trays. This is going to happen multiple times. It's not just one or two incidents. It's like four or five, maybe six. So she's a waitress. He owns this bar. He says he doesn't remember her whatsoever, but he was sorry if he made her feel uncomfortable. So the New York City's comptroller owned a bar named Uptown Local. The alleged harassment took place decades ago when she worked at Uptown Local Restaurant Bar Stringer co-founded helped to run fashion stylist Teresa Logan, 47, told the New York Times that Stringer repeatedly groped her and kissed her and made other sexual advances in the early 1990s when Stringer was 32 and she was 18. She's a waitress. He owns the bar. Now, Scott Stringer says he's got no memory of Teresa Logan whatsoever. And then he said, Uptown Local was a long-ago chapter in my life from the early 1900s, and it was all a bit of a mess. So Teresa Logan said that Stringer groped her while she was carrying trays in the restaurant. He had forcibly kissed her several times when they hung out after work. Once, as they walked to another bar, after her shift, Stringer started kissing her, groping her. So that's an assault, right? Forcibly kissing is an assault. I believe her, so Scott Stringer needs to keep his goddamn fucking hands to himself. This is Teresa Logan. She said it was almost like this out-of-body experience where I'm like, what do I do? Like, this is my boss, she told the Times. Meanwhile, he's like, 
his hand going up my skirt and my chest. On an earlier occasion, the two were taking a cab to another bar after Logan's shift had ended when she said Stringer had slid his hand up her inner thigh and kissed her. Stringer lost the endorsement, not just from the Working Families Party, but also Food and Water Action, an environmental group, and also the UFCW Local 1500, a union representing about 20,000 grocery workers in New York. So there you go. Those are the two accusations and some of the details. Now a trial needs to happen, right? We need a trial. He said he really wanted to get this adjudicated. So we need a fair trial with an even-handed judge. Maybe Judge Mathis, Judge Judy, Judge Ito. But we need to figure out if Scott Stringer, if he's an Enzies and sorry, if he's a Harvey Weinstein, or if he's a Denzel Washington. So Gene Kim. Jean Kim, the first accuser. I believe her. I believe her. I also think that it happened one time. It happened one time. I don't hear what the struggle is, you know, where she said, no, I don't want this. And he said, I don't care. And he persists. And it doesn't happen again and again. She said that he tried to fuck her, right? Attempted consensual, you know, consensual penetrating vaginal sex. And she said, no, and now it's over, right? So I feel like they were hanging out. He made his move, and that's, you know, what a terrible, stupid, crap move it was. But it's over, okay? It's over. So I feel like at the moment, at the time, when I think about what's justice, justice is eye for an eye. So you have, you know, you're working with him. You didn't want this, or maybe you didn't like how he did it or something. I don't know. But you're working with him. He tries the thing. You say no, very crystal clear, I don't want this, no, no, keep your hands off me, back up, back up, I don't want this, no, stop, and he stops, I think that's a little bit different than, you know, just outright assault, because what it seems like to me, I mean, you got this beautiful woman who's working for him for free, which, what's up with that? And he fell in love, and he made a move. His move is gross and awful, and he's a creep. And, you know, it's, it would suck to be Gene Kim having some, you know, disgusting creep, creep on you, touching you. You liked, you know, the comptroller, his comptroller campaign. You really thought he was going to change everything with his comptroller campaign, and you just wanted to help him get elected so that way it would help the city out. You, you weren't interested in him whatsoever. You just wanted, you liked the ideas that he represented. And his, you know, move is so fucking gross, I don't see how that would work with anybody. I mean, basically, when Scott Stringer goes for it, he just kind of pokes around, right? Pokes around, rubbing thighs, right? Butt, crotch, poking around. What are you doing, man? What the fuck are you doing? And when he asked her, why won't you fuck me? Why won't you fuck me? It's like, hey, you know, can I kiss you? <laughs> can I kiss you? Why won't you fuck me? It's presumptuous. Why won't you? It presupposes that she was supposed to fuck him. Why won't I fuck you, Scott? Because you're creepy as fuck, bro. <laughs> this is your move. This is your dance of seduction. Just kind of grope and poke around, and I'm just supposed to fall for that, huh? Now, I read in some Chinese dynasty or era, this is University of Louisville, actually, a Chinese professor. Maybe as the Manchu, she was in the, the civilization of China. We're talking about the, a China culture that required the woman to scream and yell and fight and shout with all of her might so it's clear as day to the perpetrator and to everybody else around them that she doesn't want this. No, 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 no. Because when you go past no... Well, now, that's an assault. That's clear as day. So if Scott Stringer tried to move like that on, you know, on a loved one, you know, my mother, if he tried that on my mother, I wouldn't like it. All right, if he's trying to get with her, right, that's their business. If she said something very clear that she didn't want it, and I'm there and he keeps doing it, I think that's the big problem is that if he persists, he keeps on, you know, She's working with them. They're hanging out all the time. He tried this move. You know, she said no. 
So, you need to knock it the fuck off. So I feel like the big problem is when she says no, if he keeps going. You know, now I got a big fucking problem. Now I got a big fucking problem. But Scott Stringer didn't persist, okay? When he was told no, he stopped, and that's, that seems to be the only time that anything ever happened. What's justice in this case? I think smack Scott Stringer in the mouth, probably at the time, you know, but if that would make Gene Kim better, you know, Gene Kim just smack, you know, Scott in the face, and then go home, Scott, go home, man, now get the fuck out of here. I'm more bothered by the second accuser, since Scott is in a position of authority. So Scott Stringer's in a position of authority, he's the owner of this bar, and she's a waitress, and then it's going to happen several times, like five or six times. Now, I kind of go back and forth on, you know, that detail, too. So this happened 30 years ago. He's 30. She's 18. He's 60 now, and she's 48. So Scott Stringer is Teresa Logan's boss. He's her boss, okay? Well, that's a person of, of authority that would be abusing his, you know, authority. That's sexual harassment, right? That's sexual harassment. If she felt like she was in a position that she had to comply or else she would get fired. And then when Scott Stringer said that he had no memory of Teresa Logan, no memory. According to her, she worked for him. They went out several times. It's 30 years ago. He can't remember her? Is he that big of a playboy? Just No, I think it sounds like bullshit. It sounds like bullshit. She worked for him. He hired her. He, you know, kissed her, forcibly kissed her, groped her. Says he's got no recollection of her? Bullshit. So I didn't like how he, you know, with Gene Kim, he seemed more diplomatic, saying that, you know, respect the woman, let's have due process, let's see what happened. But with Teresa Logan, he's like, who? Teresa Logan, who? I don't know who Teresa Logan is. But then he said he apologized. If he made her feel uncomfortable, he apologizes. When he said, you know, with Gene Kim, he wanted the whole thing adjudicated. He wanted the whole thing adjudicated. It should have been adjudicated for both Teresa Logan and Gene Kim, or still should be adjudicated. Maybe they all should have gone to family court. Judge Judy, Judge Mathis, Judge Ito, you know, for the campaign. Get it adjudicated immediately in front of us all. Get it adjudicated in front of us all so we can watch it too. Now, I do wonder about five or six times, if Teresa Logan really didn't like Scott's advances, why would she keep on going out with him? Why would she work there? Why would she keep working there? Why would she put herself around him? Was it that great of a job? The only thing that I can figure is that it's capitalism. In order to live in America, you must have a job. You must have a job. I've seen some trash, who says, I'm going to beat the system by not being a wage slave, have kids, get on welfare, but in the way the system beat them because it forced you to become a, a mother. But in America, you must get a wage slave job if you want to live. You must get a wage slave job. So she found herself a job. Here, you know, this fucking boss is doing this shit. She wants to keep working. She don't know how to get... Tell him no without breaking, you know, his uh, heart or his feelings to a point where he wants to retaliate. So capitalism isn't Scott's fault. That's society's fault. So that's a failure of the U.S. social safety net. So Scott needs to pay, but also the society needs to pay too. <laughs> So I can understand that kind of Teresa Logan liked the job, didn't want to have sex with Scott, wanted to work with him. If you really didn't like it and it's an assault, you know, you're just like, fuck that shit. And then it happens five or six times. I can understand, you know, her perspective, but I can see Scott Stringer thinking that he was winning her over every time he, you know, wanted to plant a kiss and was able to get one on her. He's thinking that every time, you know, each one of his successful advances – that he's winning her over if she never indicated that she didn't like it. So justice is eye for an eye, I believe. You know, it happened like she said. And since he was her boss, right, he was her boss, so he put her in that bad, you know, situation. 
she didn't clearly express if she, you know, wanted it or not. So I think that Justice I for I six smacks, right? Smack Scott six times, two thousand dollar fine. Now the punishment for the American system is universal basic income. The punishment for the system is universal basic income. If we Americans had the right to live, if Teresa Logan could go home and just live her life, she's got a right to live. She doesn't have to work or die. Work or die, motherfucker. Well, with those high, you know. So Logan, Teresa, she, if she had universal basic income, if her income, if you know, for the year, if her life was guaranteed. She wouldn't have had to have sold her labor out to somebody else, put herself in a position to be sexually abused over and over again. And so universal basic income would save a lot of people's lives in, you know, shitty situations like this. Instead of, it would also probably save capitalism. UBI would probably save capitalism. But universal basic income, you know, would have saved Teresa Logan. Because I feel like, why keep going to the same thing? Well, if you had a rent to pay, you know, whatever, you got to go to the job. You got to fucking make money and shit, right? And maybe she's making good money at the place. So it's like, fuck, fuck, why is this motherfucker doing this shit? When, what am I supposed to do about it, right? Hey, don't touch me. Oh, you're going to be like that and then just be shitty here, be shitty there, then, you know, get fired. So it's like, man, I really like this job, man. What are you doing? Why are you fucking... You're fucking our relationship up now, Scott. What are you doing? Real quick, on the whole, you must believe women thing. No, I do not. I don't have to believe women. I don't have to believe men. I don't have to believe anybody. People fucking lie. People fucking lie. And I think you've got to be scarce with belief. Because if you believe something, like person A committed a crime against person B, at least for the righteous and the just, well, that governs, your behavior, belief governs behavior. So I don't have to believe anybody. Anybody can say any goddamn thing. But I think what I must do is be for truth, justice, love, peace. And since I know for sure that something is going on, Jean Kim, you know, she's either A, doing false allegations, or B, there's sexual assault going on. So I know something is going on. I know that for sure, right? Either there's false reporting or there's crimes. Since I know something is going on, that would require some investigation. Hammurabi Code says that the punishment for false reporting of a crime is the same as that crime. Now, all that being said, on New York City's mayor, on the front of the, New York, of the mayor of New York City, what does this mean for the campaign? There's other candidates. There's other candidates out there, like Paperboy. New York City, you should vote for Paperboy to be your mayor. He's a progressive. New York City. There's other candidates out there. And Scott Stringer, I don't, you know, what, he gets six, uh, seven smacks in the mouth. So he gets seven smacks in the mouth and a $2,000 fine. But you know what? I am creeped out by Scott Stringer. I don't like the way he holds himself. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like his mouth. He doesn't look like a mayor. Whereas you got Ray McGuire. Ray McGuire, he looks, you know, strong. He looks like a mayor. Eric Adams, he looks and acts like a mayor. Scott Stringer, he does not. The two allegations aren't the worst things in the world. And they should have gotten adjudicated. I think Judge Judy isn't a bad idea for, you know, in a campaign like this. Waiting for the judicial, you know, system to... But the way Scott Stringer holds himself, the way Scott Stringer moves, he don't move like a New York City mayor. Paperboy, he moves like a mayor. And he's a progressive. So we got other progressives in this race. It wasn't just him to begin with. I still like Diane Morales. I like Paperboy. My top five for New York City... Paperboy, Diane Morales, Maya Wiley, Art Chang, Aaron Folden Nar for the mayor of New York City. Paperboy, Diane Morales, Maya Wiley, Art Chang, and Aaron Folden Nar. That's my top five. You don't need Scott Stringer. Why do you need Scott Stringer when you got Art Chang and Aaron Folden Nar and Maya Wiley and Diane Morales? 
Why do you need Scott Stringer when you got Paperboy? Paperboy is against poverty. Paperboy wants to build more houses. Paperboy wants universal basic income. Paperboy wants Medicare for all. And most importantly, Paperboy is for love. So there you go. That's that wasn't too bad, huh? That's a little bit about Scott Stringer, what's going on, some details into that situation. And don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote in New York City. And for the rest of you, make sure you live, love, laugh.